I think that what we found is that we probably aren't operators. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek because we've done probably 25 deals that were the GPN or the primary syndicator and, and technically are operating. So, you know, it took me a little while to figure that out. But when I talk about these different asset classes that we're doing, I think it's important for the audience to recognize that we're actually structuring our business around the idea of doing one thing and doing it well. This is your daily syndication show. I'm your host, David Robinson. Today, our guest is Isaac Bennett. Isaac, welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much, David. It's a pleasure to be here. So Isaac is the founder of You Are, a people brand. He has an extensive background in international real estate, equity, and alternative asset investments. He loves baseball, music, and spending time with his wife, Blake. I believe in just sort of preparing for our interview today that, Isaac, you have sort of a unique way about building your business and a unique model. And so I'm interested in diving into that. Maybe we can start out the show by you just giving us a little bit more background about yourself and then also break down for us your business and what you guys do. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So really my entire background has been in sales, kind of executive sales leadership. I actually didn't attend college right out of high school. I, I got into a sales position and have been doing that ever since. So I spent about 16 years in corporate America, and my last gig would have been a, a vice president of sales for a mid-sized manufacturing and mining company. So my entire career was in that, but I've always invested, David, and it's always really been my passion to put deals together and to invest in real estate and other alternative assets. So really just this year, earlier this year, 2021, I should say. I'm not used to the, the calendar having flipped yet. But <laughs> it is unusual. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife and I really decided that we needed to pursue the, the passions that were on our heart and, and really put it all under one umbrella. And that umbrella ended up being the company that you mentioned, You Are. And the background on that, I think, is kind of fun. So what I found is that we really didn't have desire to go into business just for the sake of building our own little kingdom. We really wanted to help impact the world and help light other people's entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial spirits on fire. So we started UR as a project that would hold each of the different businesses that we already ran under it. So the foundation of that name, David, came from... I found I was always trying to exhort people by saying, you are. So I might say to my, my five-year-old niece, Collins, I'd say, Collins, you are beautiful. Or, or my 10-year-old nephew, I'd say, Crosley, you are awesome at baseball. And that really was what birthed the name is that I found I was always saying it. So each of our agencies is a suffix to that prefix. And there's five agencies under that brand, one of them being missional you know, in its pursuit. So that's kind of the foundation of you are. Love it. So what are the challenges and opportunities in structuring a brand with multiple businesses underneath that brand? The challenge is absolutely clarity and approaching the market with clarity. I think it's really interesting because you know, on our day-to-day -day lives, we operate with a number of different companies that, that are this way. I mean, even if you look at the transition that Facebook just made, they have so many businesses that are under quote unquote Facebook that their transition to Meta seemed kind of obvious, right? Because Meta owns Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, et cetera. So this actually, this type of idea is everywhere. Virgin is another example of that. You've got Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airlines. And so I think that the premise here is building a brand which is symbiotic in nature and can create a flywheel effect. But when you're just starting, everyone says, well, we don't know what you do. And the, the reality is, is that it takes a little bit more than like three seconds to explain that there's multiple businesses under this brand. But that is definitely the challenge that we see most. Yeah. And so maybe just break down for us the different businesses under the UR brand and what they focus on. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. I really appreciate it. The first one is UR Well. And I have a, a long journey with mental health and depression. And that's maybe a conversation for another time. But health and wellness is near and dear to my heart very much so. So UR Well is the first one. And then UR Home is my wife's realty business. And we also, of course, our, our investments run through our, our realty business as well in many cases. So we have UR Well, UR Home. And then we have UR Secure, which is in partnership with Intrusion, which is a cybersecurity agency. 
we believe that your health and wellness must extend online as well. And, and we just think that the world is woefully short on cybersecurity solutions that actually work. So well, home, secure. And then we have you are abundant, which is probably mostly the topic of today. And that is my business that I run, the agency that I run. And it is focused on alternative asset syndication. And then finally, the fifth agency is you are good, which is purely philanthropic and missional in nature. And we donate 20% of our net income, maybe similar to LifeBridge, except 20 instead of 50, to missional charities that are near and dear to our heart. And do you have a particular charity that you focused on to date or anything that sort of stands out as a priority for you? Yeah, I would say there's a particular priority. And one of them is a, an actually a missionary in Northern India. And she will be our first focus with what she is building over there. And she's got a pretty special ministry that I'd be happy to link in the in the show notes. Okay, great. Well, let's shift our focus to You Are Abundant, the syndication investment company that you are focused on personally. Tell us a little bit about Abundant and what you guys focus on there. Yeah, I think that our mission there is to bring people together to do deals they probably wouldn't do themselves. And, you know, we have done a lot of different things in our investing life. Things like resort property investing overseas, which is something that most people don't do. And it's a little bit off the reservation, but I actually believe in many ways it comes with less risk than some of the things that people are investing in real estate stateside. So um, that's maybe a unique one. Uh, we're pretty involved with music royalties, which I think is a, a really interesting asset class. It's extremely passive. I, I kind of joke at people who talk about real estate as passive income because I think it's the opposite. But uh, music royalties would be an example of that. We love mobile home parks. We've invested in some mobile home parks with investors. We also like certain sections of oil and gas, more on the picks and shovels side, where we can provide opportunities to people with significant tax benefits and access to the oil and gas industry without actually you know, wildcatting or something of that nature. Yeah. Okay. So resort property, music royalties, mobile home parks, oil and gas, anything else that you guys focus on or have invested in? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, certainly significantly in real estate, both buying and selling. And just for instance, I guess it's kind of bread and butter to say that and maybe everyone kind of syndicates real estate. So I don't talk about it too much, but you know, we're, we're very close to contract on a 93 unit mixed use building with 15,000 square feet of commercial space as well in a mixed use that's a, a historic tax credit deal. So it's a very complicated deal, but there are some phenomenal financial metrics in that kind of deal. And that's a deal that we've syndicated and are coming in as the GP as well. So yeah, definitely real estate. I shouldn't leave that yeah. out, but yeah, just figured great. it was. Well, you, you did throw the mobile home parks in there, but yeah. So, okay. Well, the first thought that comes to my mind, and I'd love to sort of get your opinion and, and your guidance for other listeners that may be exploring structuring your business in this type of fashion is a wide variety. Right. And I think there's a lot of individuals that would argue that, hey, narrowing your focus is going to allow you to become an expert in that space, garner trust from your investor network because you are highly focused. Yet you've decided to go very broad, not only in the multiple companies that you're working on managing, but also in the asset classes and asset types that you're focused on. Maybe shed some light for us in regard to your investing thesis and, and mindset around that. It's a salient question. And I think that what we found is that we probably aren't operators. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek because we've done probably 25 deals that were the GPN or the primary syndicator and, and technically are operating. So, you know, it took me a little while to figure that out. But when I talk about these different asset classes that we're doing, I think it's important for the audience to recognize that we're actually structuring our business around the idea of doing one thing and doing it well. And that's managing investors and raising money for A plus operators. There's a, another deal that we're working on where we're syndicating, we're partnering with an A plus operator on 772 units of multifamily. So, you know, from that standpoint, we're only focusing on the investor and we're only focusing on doing due diligence. And we, we feel like a significant value add that we can offer is doing due diligence on a number of different asset classes we have experience in. We sit around all day, 50, 60 hours a week doing nothing but due diligence. And you know, I think that's where our value add comes in. And that and just partnering with fantastic operators. So we pick the best of the best operators and then we point our investors towards those operators and try to negotiate them preferred terms to what the operators are even offering their individual investors. So I think that's where focus comes in for us is really right now we do one thing, which is 
raise money and manage investors. Love it. Thanks for that clarity. And that makes a lot of sense. And so from a very tactical, structural perspective, because I think there's a lot of listeners that are like, man, that sounds very interesting. I'm curious how he structures that. Uh, is that through a fund to fund model? Is it a special purpose vehicle? Maybe describe for us what an investor could expect if they were working with you and how that relationship with operators in other markets and other asset classes work. Yeah, I'll be honest, David, that's a great question. And it varies. For instance, on the deal that I just mentioned, we are bringing our own fund to that deal and we are acting as a co GP for that operator. So, you know, there are some very specific SEC rules that you have to follow in regards to this. In this case, we are a partner, you know, we're a GP. So we're bringing our own fund, our own investor fund. And the reason that it makes sense for investors to participate in our fund in that manner is they're getting a preferred deal over what if they took their own, you know, 200 grand to the operator, they're getting a preferred mm -hmm. deal as to what they would be with him directly. And that's, that's their incentive to work with us, right? And hopefully because we're, you know, fun to work with, and we, we manage it well. But that particular one is a typical 506 fund. But we've done a number of different just multi-member LLCs. And I think in the future, we will probably set up a blind pool. But I think we need a little bit more substantive, cohesive group before we do that. Because we probably don't want to do that, you know, with maybe less than 10 million or something. So, yeah, understandable. Well, moving forward, what uh, do you guys see on the horizon for you moving forward in, into this new year? Yeah, we have big goals, no doubt about it. It's still a relatively young business, even though we've been investing for a really long time. I think what we're looking at is making sure that in each of these asset classes that we like, that we have one or maybe two operators that we have meet our criteria and are, we, we feel are truly A-plus operators. And establishing those relationships where we sit with them in a GP position, and then we are providing just unbelievable value to our investors. So I really believe that the equities markets right now are a death trap for almost everyone, and that people should be focused on changing their mindset from you know infinite liquidity to durability of assets and permanent assets and assets that provide cash flow and are tax advantaged and and really start thinking about generational investments instead of you know yoloing GameStop calls or whatever people are doing these days. So we're focused on just um, putting out there the virtues of private placement and you know just really how we do due diligence for investors. So let's talk then about your specialty, which is attracting investors and attracting very high level operators and bringing them together. Maybe let's start with the operators first. What could you share with our audience that would be helpful to them in seeking out operators that they may want to partner with? Yeah, I think there's a really easy answer here. And that answer is like, oh, track record and look for exits and everything else. And I don't want to minimize those things because they are important. But I actually have a few nits to pick with the idea that exits are important because I, I think the very best operators often sell way less frequently than most. And I think there is a serious discipline towards the idea of thinking about generational assets rather than turning and burning to pay LPs back. And I think that we have the most symbiotic thoughts with operators who view selling as an opportunity, not as a strategy, and with investors who are extremely patient with their capital and they're buying it for the discounted cash flow streams that they're getting. And that's the value that's actually in the business. That's actually the value being created is that discounted cash flow model. So selling is not necessarily wrong, but I think business models that focus on it might not actually maximize the assets under their management. So, you know, if your original question was, what are you looking for in operators? I think that's it. I think it's symbiotic thinking of, of capital being a permanent thing and being irreplaceable. We live in a world where we view capital as uh, very replaceable. And I think that we are looking for operators who view it as totally irreplaceable. And any strategies, tips, tactics that you've employed or deployed to connect with operators that match that criteria and foster that relationship and ultimately you know, put a business relationship together? Anything that you might be able to share that would be helpful for the listeners that are trying to accomplish that in their own business? Yeah, I think it's very important to sit down with them face to face. And it's a little harder to do in today's day and age. But I think that you can learn a lot about a person by spending a few hours with them several different times. 
and you can really see the the true sides and talk to their employees and understand how they're treated and what the culture of that company is and whether or not they have moral and ethical values like you might and how they treat their tenants and all these other things and and really just thoroughly read through the communications that these operators may have with investors or tenants or clients, whatever it may be, and just understand whether or not these are people that have values like you have, whatever those values may be. And so I think that that personal connection and really knowing your operator is what I would suggest is is thoroughly vetting and understanding the quality of people that they are. Yeah, great advice. Well, let's uh, shift gears slightly and let's talk about the other aspect of your business. And that's uh, attracting investors to your investing thesis, model, services, et cetera. What's your strategy as far as that's concerned? You know, right now it has been primarily word of mouth, David. And this is an area where we really need to improve, to be honest. We feel like that our operator network, just from the nature of how much we've done over the years and how many people we've run into, we feel really good about our operator network. Our investor network is still growing and it's growing pretty fast. But, you know, we're coming to people and saying things like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna connect you with the very best operator on a deal we really like. You know, and, and I should probably back up. When we're choosing operators, we're not doing it on blind faith that they'll have good deals. We choose our favorite operators, and then we choose our favorite deals from those operators. We're not a yes every time by any stretch of the imagination. So we are coming to people and saying, these are the terms. This is what we're offering. This is sort of the alpha that we're generating for you above what you could even get directly from them. And this is why we like that deal. So our strategy from that standpoint has been primarily word of mouth. Certainly in 2022, one of our major goals is to ramp up our marketing efforts to really show people the service that we're bringing them. I, I should note that we don't charge fees. And I probably shouldn't say that in public because I reserve the right to change on a specific deal if we need to. But we're not charging fees because we come in with our operators as a GP we're taking the risk in the deal and putting our skin in the game. And that's how we're compensated rather than through compensation for managing our investor network. So when we say we provide additional alpha for our investors, we mean that very seriously. There's nothing coming off the top. And so uh, I think that is a huge portion of the value add that is very different from most fund to fund models is that we are negotiating on the behalf of our investors and we're not charging them anything for that fee. So that's it's truly a service that says our skin is in the game on these individual projects as a GP, and we're going to get you um, uh, better terms than you could get on your own without any fees. So again, reserve the right to change on a specific deal if we have to, but that is really what we're intent on doing. And is the operator themselves, are they collecting fees off the top? Your partner? Generally, yeah, of course. Yeah. So in most cases, and there's multiple partners, they all do it different. This, that's the interesting thing about this business is it seems like every deal is structured a little bit differently as you're well familiar with. But you know, typically you're going to have a GP charge an acquisition fee of some variety. I think the very best operators charge fair fees. And you actually want that as an LP. You don't want a GP skimping on fees and then running out of money if the market turns a little bit because they're not charging management fees or whatever. I encourage the idea of a of a good operator charging fees for sure, but um, we've just made the decision not to do that because we think we can provide extra value for our investors and still be compensated fairly on the GP side for that. Yeah, makes sense. Well, Isaac, this has been a great conversation. I think you have a visionary business model. You have a lot of areas that you like to focus on, and underneath the you are brand with you are well you are home you are secure you are abundant which is the syndication business that we've discussed mainly today and you are good tell us a little bit about what you guys what you see for the brand itself moving forward do you see yourself really narrowing the businesses that are under that brand expanding those trying to focus on those underneath what uh, what's the plan for the brand yeah, actually, I think it's the opposite of narrowing. We view this as a platform brand. And the idea is that we would partner with other entrepreneurs who maybe didn't have the back office or the financial backing to start other businesses, but have passion. And but you know, we're a brand to light the entrepreneurial passions on on fire for entrepreneurs. So we view you are as a holding company that 
wants to come along and partner with other people. And that an example of that is you are well. You know, we have a director of that that is passionate about health and wellness and and she runs that really, really well. She does a great job. And and I think that like these other companies, whether it's Meta or Virgin that we're talking about, we view this as a platform that could really have as many agencies under it as as possible. I, I think we're very eyes wide open about the idea that not every idea is going to work. <laughs> we'll have we'll certainly have failures in there and that's okay. We want this to be a place where people can come and with lower risks than they would on their own, they can try an idea that fits under the UR ethos. Yeah, love it. Well, I want to start winding down here. I've got a few final questions for you. The first is, what's a habit, a daily habit that you've developed that has uh, contributed to your success? You know, I mentioned earlier, I think that I've, I've had a long history with mental health and I, uh, prayer is, is the first one I would say is a daily habit that if I lapse in it, it's amazing how quickly my life goes downhill. And so that is a significant one. I try to stay very healthy. It's funny because I've actually been sick this last week and haven't worked out for a week, but in general, certainly working out is a daily habit that just puts me in the right frame of mind to get going. And then from there, it's really just about staying organized and I'm a huge goals maker. I have checklists every single day that I put some really stupid stuff on there, David, just to make sure that I get get on a roll checking stuff off. I make sure I have my one or two things that are really important and then a bunch of other stuff that just gets me in the habit of checking things off. So yeah, those are those are a few of the habits. Yeah. And just from a very practical perspective, when you're putting together your list, do you use a particular, ty- a particular app or technology or a spreadsheet? How do you do that? How do you organize it? I do. It's this folder that I have that I take a pen and scratch a bunch of notes on and put check boxes <laughs> next to it. It's really, really the old, I the mean, old the pen and paper. Just blows my, Man. <laughs> yeah, it just blows my mind away. You know, I've tried so many things in that regard and found that dumping something onto a paper with a pen is the most effective thing for me. As as shameful as it is for me to admit that that's the best way for me to get things done. Yeah, I love it. Well, Isaac, this has been a great conversation. Thank you for sharing with us a little bit about your background and and your journey and also this unique business model of starting sort of with a brand at the the top and, and building out businesses that you're passionate about underneath and really going wide on this rather than staying very narrow and focused on a particular aspect or asset type. I love your strategy. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, learn more about what you have going on in the future? Yeah, I'm, I'm be happy to email Isaac, I-S-A-A-C at apeoplebrand.com, just like our website, apeoplebrand.com, which is our slogan. So yeah, anytime they want to connect with me, that's totally fine. And if you want to put my phone number in the show notes as well, that's also totally fine. We'll have that info in the show notes. Again, Isaac, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing with our listeners today. And we look forward to connecting with you again down the road. Thank you so much, David. It's a real pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being a loyal listener of the show. Please subscribe and share it with your friends. We want to help you become the passive investor you've always wanted to become, but also the operator you've always wanted to become. We want to be the number one resource for your real estate investing journey. But go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing in real estate today.